As we try to finish up assignment six and our poster design, just a, a quick reminder of the steps so far that you are needed, required to post to meet all the requirements of assignment six. I'm wanting you to post your text blocking sketch around either your spot illustration or your logo. You don't need to include this, but this is where I tried out some different typefaces within Photoshop just to see how their character worked with with my uh, text blocking. And I downloaded these typefaces from Defont, so you are not limited to just the typefaces that are already in your computer. And then I posted my initial black line art or black shape vector solution. But if you remember in the last couple videos, I finished this and completed this and then saved it as an EPS. So I need to update that. What my black type looks like now is in my poster file. I'll turn off the effects on it. It looks like this, right? So you can see how not just taking the typefaces as they are, but using Illustrator to outline them and customize them can really help it match your project. Then all that's required well, let's save that, right? So to save your black text, you just turn off everything else in your poster design because it does need to be rasterized a JPEG or a PNG in order to be uploaded to Canvas. Though, of course, you want to keep it as, a, as an EPS for yourself. You always want to keep those vector files. So there it is. There is my black type. So I'm just going to save that really quick as a copy. And that copy, I turned off the background. I'm just going to make this free floating black shapes, kind of like a black logo. I'm going to save it as a PNG to assignment six. And I'm just going to call this black text. Okay. So that will be the next thing right here that I put into Canvas. Notice it's free floating and it's quite an improvement on just the typefaces, the type tools as they are in Illustrator and Photoshop. So this example was using uh, type tool defaults. So those type tool defaults gave me this. Next, I modified those, outlined and modified the black shape vector type. and then saved that as an EPS. And I don't need you to post all those steps, I just need you to post your finished black type, which you can pull just like I did from, from your poster. And you can post it with your illustration or without. I kind of like posting it without so you just see the shapes that the type makes. Even though it's obviously missing something with the illustration in the middle. Okay, next, you're going to post your color type, your color type solution. So you look at the examples. This is the black type. This is the color type. There's lots of ways to color. You can color inside the type. You can color the line art itself with color overlay. You can do drop shadows. You can do effects. You can do gradients. You can do that all in Photoshop. Or you can color it in Illustrator and save a color EPS. What I did is I just used layer styles. And first I did one that was white, a white color overlay with a drop shadow. And I actually kind of like that, but white isn't a color. So I'm forcing myself to explore a little bit more. Oh, here it is. So this one is green with a white stroke and and a drop shadow and that looks fine 
but I don't think it works great for my poster so far. So as you're doing the color type, the reason that that's kind of the last step is you want it to work with your, your colored illustration, you want it to work with your colored background, you want it to work with any special effects. So let me show you these different builds I have so far. The things that go into making a poster for this assignment, right? Which is common to a lot of posters. It's a very common kind of illustration and design assignment. So first I need a blank white background. It helps to show our color. Then I created a middle gray rectangle fill and just shrunk it a little bit to create a white border. So overall, this is 20 inches by 16 inches, but you wanna have a white edge on it at 350 pixels per inch. Then I, you can do a background any way you want. Some of you are painting it. Some of you using the gradation tool. I'm gonna to show you some different things. What I wanted to do this semester was showcase risograph textures. So this is a Japanese kind of uh, Xerox technique from the 70s that's still used today for small print runs. And it has kind of a mechanical texture to it, even when it's diffuse printing. And when I do digital print jobs, I like to, to reference the mechanics of printing a little bit. And so just like we did with our early compositing projects, I started to layer up different risograph textures, right? Like this one, this one, this one. Uh, this is just a gradient overlay that I put in of a rainbow <laughs> under effects. So I just painted that. That could be my only background if I wanted, right? Something like this. And I'm gonna maybe play with that some more. And then I added some others. And then all of that was pretty cool and pretty saturated. I added some little watermark, like printing registration, risograph things. But then I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So instead of just lowering the opacity on everything, I brought in a piece of white risograph print or actually just basically white paper, and I turned it to a dissolve blending mode and then took the opacity down, and that basically turned it into this risograph texture, which bitmaps it. So that's always a nice way, just using dissolve. But then the problem is when you do dissolve, the computer can't show it very well. So I'll make a duplicate of it, and then I'll merge those two duplicate layers, and then it will show me what it really looks like. So now these are, this is a normal fully opaque layer, but it shows me what the dissolve does. And it basically just cuts out pixels kind of randomly. And not only does it help the background be less saturated, less opaque, it also gives it more texture. Now, I like this background. It's colorful, it's retro. On top of that, I put my, my coloring for my spot illustration. So here's my offset. Here is my black type. Here is my color type. Here is the, the white type, which I kind of like. Here is my first spot illustration, and here is my line art on top of that, right? So this is a fully finished poster but I'm not happy with the color type solution I came up with. And I'm not sure I like this stroke on the line art. So I think I might get rid of that. So there's a little bit of that, that overlay, but not much. In fact, yeah, I think that helps. Okay. Or maybe just turn off that extra line art. So it gives me options, which is great. So everything looks a little intentionally messy, a little funky. Now let's play with coloring the type in a way that's more satisfying. Besides just doing the green color overlay like this, what if I bring in a texture overlay for the type? And if I look at inspiration that I like, this is a, a freelance, you know, digitally designed concert poster. 
And this uses a technique called halftone dots. And this is all done digitally, but this references old printing techniques. So you see these halftone dot patterns, very mechanical. Maybe I want to color my type that way. And it has a lot to do with silk screen and kind of older print methods where you can't have such high resolution like we can in modern printing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a Google search for because I want halftone dots not just in tone but also in color. So if I look up halftone dot color overlay, I'll get some images just like some texture overlays we've looked at. And I'm looking for color. And there's not a lot with all those terms. But you will find tutorials on how to get this effect in Photoshop. Let me, and vector paths and things, let me limit it to large. There's something I can play with because I can always change the colors. This looks nice. This is colorful grunge texture with a halftone overlay. It doesn't look like it's watermarked. It is watermarked, but I can live with that. And it's high enough resolution. So I'm going to save this to my folder like I did for my risograph textures, or I can just look up a risograph color. All right, so if I look up a risograph color background, I get some, some different kind of results. I want something with a little bit of movement to it. This is kind of nice. It's very spring. This is kind of fun. Now, that was a broken link, so not high enough resolution. And this one will work even though it's pretty low. At least it's got the risograph texture and no watermarks. All right, so now if I want to replace my black text with a color, this is what we did very early on in the class with our first exercise as an option. We can take that color. I'm going to move it to the top here just so we see it. Ah, come on. Where did it go? This is why I like using command right bracket to move things up. <laughs> there it is. I'm going to stretch it so it covers my type. For the first exercise, I talked about this like wrapping paper that we're going to cut our shape out of. And you can see all of those kind of digital noise effects that come from really forcing this to be a larger resolution. But that also comes from the risograph printing. You know, they're not digitally smooth gradations. Okay, now what I'm going to do is turn that off, go to my black type layer, which is here, and then I'm going to use the magic wand and select with contiguous turned off the empty space around my black type. And then I'm going to say select inverse, so it's selecting only what's within my black type. Then I move that selection to my wrapping paper. <laughs> and then I hit Command J to stamp a cutout of those of that texture and color on there. Now what's nice is I can blend that. With my other choices, right? So I have green underneath it with a stroke, what I can do is play with a different blending mode. So hard light works pretty well. 
overlay work.